Anthony Winner, co-host of Westwood Open House. We're here live at the UCLA Bruins home field at the Rose Bowl, but our other home field where Donovan's at is the home of Westwood Open House, Williams Homes. What's going on, y'all? This is your boy Donovan D.C. Carter, and we are here at our other house, the Williams Ranch House, right here in Castaic, California. Come check us out. Welcome everyone to another episode of Westwood Open House. We are on episode four, but a special episode. My name is Anthony, one your co-host, and my other co-host, Donovan Carter. You know what, we're, today's a celebration. We are in our new home, and we're gonna shoot here maybe about four or five more episodes, but we're here at Williams Ranch, part of the Williams Homes development in DC. We're gonna take them on a tour later, you know, room by room. Yeah. Talk about this amazing partnership that we have with uh, Williams Homes. Man, it's amazing. Beautiful homes out here. Castell, California is not too far from Magic Mountain. About 30, 40 minutes outside the city. Traffic's not too bad, but the air is beautiful. They got a vineyard here. Yeah. Parks, pool, everything, whatever you need. Yeah, we're gonna go to go kart later. We're gonna show you guys the whole community very shortly. And shout out to Kathy and Patrice, amazing spread, amazing people. You know, we're gonna have a watch party here, probably the Penn State game, and we're gonna invite some of our friends and family out here to come check out this beautiful development. Yeah, absolutely. Come through, have a good time, watch the Bruins do well, and come check out some of these beautiful homes. That's that's awesome. So, um, you know what? We're gonna deep dive into this week. It's our opening week against the Big Ten. Our first opponent is Indiana. What do you know about Indiana so far, DC? Well, right now they're 2-0, start off fast. I got a new coach, um, I think his name Kirk Signati. He came from James Madison, and I did well over there. I think he only lost like nine or 10 games, but first year Indiana, last week they scored 77 points, which is crazy. Uh, the best the best ever in a school history. But uh, that was last week versus Western Illinois. They're coming out this week to Pasadena to the Rose Bowl. They first time actually here since the 60s, I believe. But uh, it's going to be a good game. UCLA has to come out, play hard, play fast, and just hit them in the mouth. Yeah, we got to play it hard. And not only saying that is adapt to that big style. I'm sorry, the Big Ten style of playing football, you know, fingers in the trenches and going hard. Yeah. It's, in, it's in between the lines, but this particular team is gritty. Now, coach, his coach, I'm talking about Indiana, said yes. they're coming to Pasadena to win. They're not, they're, they came to Pasadena to kick ass, that's quote unquote, that's what he said. Right. Should that be bullets board material for the Bruins, right? seeing that, saying that they're going to come in the Rose Bowl and take this W? How do you think that's going to fire up uh, the, the Bruins locker room? Absolutely. I mean, for me, when I was a player, stuff like that gets me going. So, yeah, he's coming here. He's confident. You know, they scored 77 points. You know, congratulations. Western Illinois hasn't won a game since 2021. So they're going to come here and play a tough Bruins squad. But, yeah, stuff like that is going to get them fired up. And this is our first, like you said, Big Ten opponent. So we need to come in, set a tone for the conference, and just let them know, like, what you slays about. Exactly. Let's talk about that Hawaii game real briefly, some of the stuff that you think the Bruins need to work on. I just think that T.J. Harden just had a one-off game. You know, it's not yeah. un it's unusual for T.J. to play like that. Yeah. Talk about what some of the stuff that we need to do a little bit better in order to win against Indiana. Yeah, like you just said, I think we need to run the ball a lot better. T.J. Harden, we need to get him started. We need to start Keegan. Jo we need to get Keegan Jones started. We need to get our playmakers the ball. But for me, it always starts with running the ball. If you can run the ball efficiently, that just opens up the doors for everything else. And uh, yeah, defense needs to play good. Need to play stout. In the end, they're, probably, they're gonna score some points. That's what they do. But we need to make we need to make stops when it's key. Special teams need to do good. Hawaii ran a fake punt last yeah. game, which killed us and got the momentum going. So he's gonna play disciplined football. Agreed, agreed. And you know what? We didn't see Jalen Berger the last game in Hawaii, right? So that's right. gonna be interesting to see Jalen Berger through that rotation. Yes. DJ, Jalen Berger. Yes, yes. And he and, and he has experience. He came from Michigan State. I'm sure he's played Indiana before. He knows about Big Ten football. So I think that's gonna be key. They have they have a they have three they have three good running backs themselves. So we need to match our three good running backs with them too. Love that. Now let's talk about the positive stuff on the Bruins side. Yeah. Our offense second half was on fire. Yes. Let's talk about what Ethan Garbage did in that second half. I think Ethan just came in, he just 
for me at halftime, you whatever happened in the first half, you got to let it go. But I think he came in, he was more relaxed. I think he was, you know, you get a little nervous first game, get jitters. Kind of happened to him last last game. I mean, last year, his first game, but he ended up getting benched and they put Dante in. But this time, I'm just glad they stood they stood with him. But they let him just play ball, and he needs he needs to get his playmakers a ball. We got Titus, we got Titus, we got um, Jay, Jay Michael, we got. Um, Number, Rico number Flores, yeah, Rico Flores, Flores. Yeah, we got we got Casimir. We got all these guys that that they can easily have a good game. I talked about Carter Shaw in that first game. Carter yes. really broke out. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He did. He had a nice he had a nice catch. Got got us a first down. So yeah, any game is somebody can step up for us. I talked about how important that momentum was when Carter broke that uh, that that run for 27 yards. That I felt like was kind of like a shock that the Bruins needed going to the second half. Now, if the Bruins can keep up that intensity that we saw in the second half against Hawaii, I think we should be okay against Indiana. But you know what? It's very important, I think, for us to get that win. This first win in the Big Ten era. What do you think? Yeah, very important. I mean. The best thing about going 1-0, they said it's going 2-0. So I know everybody's looking forward to next week versus LSU and Oregon and all that stuff, but we got to handle business with Indiana. It's not going it's not going to be easy though. Yeah. But yeah, 2-0 would be amazing, especially for coach Foster. Yeah. As we all know, this is his first year coaching. So yeah, I would I would love to see us go 2-0 and uh, be undefeated playing next week. Love to see that, and you know it's going going two and zero going into that so-called gauntlet. You know yes. that gauntlet doesn't look too challenging after all. Penn State didn't do too well. Yeah, they right. Just lost. Yes. Oregon was struggling a little bit. Yeah, both both weeks. Both so weeks. So imagine if we're going two and zero. Yes. And if we just break even, like let's say go one and two or two and one during that little gauntlet. I think Bruins have a lot of momentum going towards the rest of the season. Yeah, I think so too, man. I just have to just take one game at a time. But yeah, we 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 have we have a chance. I mean, anytime, obviously you play, you have a chance. But yeah, Oregon, you know, they're not looking as good as we thought they did. Penn State, they just lost to Bowling Green, I believe, and um, LSU. They had trouble last week against Nickel State a little bit, lost to SC. So yeah, we we got we got potential, but we gotta we gotta win this game. Bruin fans, you have to come out. Yeah. Indiana, I'm sure they're going to travel. Who don't want to come to California in September? So we got to come out there. We got to be loud. Wear your blue, be proud. And yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait for the gauntlet, though, like myself. <laughs> well, the game starts at 4 30 this Saturday. Come early. It's going to be hot out there. Be hydrated. DC. Yeah, yeah. If you guys see DC out there, say hi to DC. He's Please. Gonna be, he's going to be out there taking pictures and uh, shaking hands and kissing babies. So we're going to bring you back in the next segment. We're going to bring Kathy on from Williams Homes and talk about this beautiful development. We're going to take a tour and we'll be right back. Another episode of Westwood Open House. Welcome back, Bruin fans. You know what? This whole show with me, DC, and the Sporting Tribune is brought to you by Williams Homes. And this is very important because we can't bring you this quality content without quality sponsors. And we just want to bring on Kathy Magner, Vice President of Sales and Marketing, onto the show. And thank you for the hospitality. First and foremost, this spread, I can't. I can't thank you enough. I'm actually, I'm, I'm wilding out right now. I'm, I'm good. I'm full. I'm, I'm happy. All right. Well, you guys are welcome. So welcome on board. Can you talk about uh, Williams Homes and the history in the in the building and what you guys do for the community? Absolutely. Uh, well, Williams Homes is definitely deep rooted in this community. Uh, Williams Ranch. It's our namesake, and uh, we're close to turning 30 years old pretty soon. Um, it all started with Lance Williams and Sadie Williams, and uh, they build new homes. We're production builders, and so we are currently in four states, six divisions, and uh, the family's growing. So we're super excited. Um, some of the stuff that we do kind of in the neighborhood has to do with giving back to um, the community. Some of the models that you've walked and you've toured today actually not only were led by Sadie Williams, but she handpicked designers, local ones, and um, some of their students to help kind of bring to life the entire community. We see that, you, you know, we're gonna go on a home tour later about the aesthetics. I mean, I, I'm glad, I love that you guys are in the community. That's what me and Donovan are doing right now. We're giving back to the Children's Hospital and you guys have that same philosophy. I, th I think that's why we're a perfect partartnership. Community so. to community. It's all about serving, right? All about serving. Yep. 
So I love that. Uh, we're actually gonna take a small little tour. We're gonna drive a little go-kart. We're gonna take you guys along with this tour. Me and DC are gonna show you this beautiful community at Williams Ranch. And also there's a vineyard, so that's a surprise. So let's take you on this tour right now. But first, here's the interview with me and Ben Bulch talking about the preview of Indiana. Guys, welcome back to Westwood Open House. I have a special guest today, LA Times beat writer Ben Bulch. Ben, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. A huge alarm here in Westwood. Uh, people are still freaking out about the Hawaii performance uh, that UCLA had against uh, Hawaii. Uh, what do you think about that, Ben? Is it a cause for alarm? Well, I think we're getting a lot of answers on Saturday. I mean, the, the, it was a tale. I mean, I hate to say the cliche was a tale of two halves, but I, there was no game that better illustrates that cliche, right? Yeah. Because first half, they looked awful. Uh, offense out of sync. Uh, you know, Hawaii goes up 10 nothing, and you're like, wow, is this team going to win a game this year? And then the second half, they pull it together, pull it out, and you're, and you're thinking maybe this is just kind of the first game sputtering that a lot of teams across the country experience. So a lot still to find out about this team. And we're seeing that with the Oregons, with the Penn States. They're, they're struggling with their first opponents. Now, that so-called gauntlet that we're going to be going through, is it seeming so dangerous now after you seeing what you see from Oregon and Penn State so far? Yeah, it's really interesting. Everybody assumed three L's in that in a row, right? right. You got at LSU, Penn State at the Rose Bowl, and then, uh, at, I'm sorry, LSU on the road, uh, Oregon at the Rose Bowl, and then at Penn State. But to your point, they all look very beatable now. I think, you know, UCLA will still be fav uh, favored to lose those games. Right. But the flip side, to me, some opponents that we thought were very beatable have looked better, like right. Nebraska, Rutgers, Nebraska. some of those. So, you know, on the whole, I still think it's one of the toughest schedules in the country. But I do think uh, that those three games now, you know, chalked up as automatic losses, you know, you got to think that the Bruins will have a chance in those. Now, now, on to that point, if you think the Bruins can still win those games and wrap up Indiana, what's the momentum like going towards, like, the three quarters of the schedule after that? Do you think they have a great chance of uh, competing for a bowl after that? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we'll know a lot more after that three-game stretch. You know, if they can beat Indiana and then, you know, maybe win one of those three or at least look good in, in those games uh, and then come home and, and play Minnesota and win that game, at that point I think the season is still in pretty good shape for UCLA. I think that they can get to the six wins they need for a bowl game and it can still be considered a successful season. But I do think that's the key point of the season uh, is the Minnesota game. How do they rebound from that just epic three-game stretch? And I will say I think the Indiana game is also a huge point because if they lose that game, right. wow, it's going to be really tough to recover given you know what lies ahead. Agreed, agreed. Let's talk about the Indiana game. So they have a, a quarterback transfer from the Mac, we're talking about Curtis Rourke. Uh, I know you haven't seen too much of him, but I do see that he's a veteran five years in the game right now. What does that bring against the Bruins defense they have to look out for? Yeah, and they also have a seventh-year running back. So, you know, you, you add that uh, veteran quarterback and a, and a running back who doesn't mistakes. They hung 77 points on, on, uh, on Western Illinois last week. It was a school record for, Il for Indiana. So uh, this, this is a team that's, you know, hitting on, on all cylinders. we got to find out how much of that is the opponent, how much of that is playing well. But I like their – I also like their coach, Kurt, Kurt Signetti. Mm -hmm. This guy doesn't take any uh, prisoners. He said at Big Ten Media Day, he said, we're coming to the Rose Bowl to kick some ass. He literally said that. Uh, mm -hmm. Go look that up. Uh, so he, they're going to come here. They're not going to be intimidated. I think it's going to be a very physical game. Can UCLA establish itself with that Big Ten style that they're going to need to succeed? Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see and find out all these answers. Agreed. And you're talking about a physical game. We need to run the ball better. And that wasn't apparent in that first game against Hawaii. Maybe yeah. is that a tribute to the playbook, you think, or maybe just T.J. Harden having a bad game? I think it was a combination of factors. I think the blocking was, was subpar. And I do think, you know, once you get behind 10 nothing, you got to throw the ball more. So I think that that was a big factor. Uh, one thing I'll be looking for this week is uh, can Jalen Berger, the transfer from Michigan State, get into the rotation because he could add a boost. Uh, I expect much better performance from T.J. Harden. We've seen him go for over 100 yards, you know, multiple times in the past. That really wasn't the same player against Hawaii. So, you know, I think there are some reasons to think that this run game can get back on track, particularly, uh, you know, in a game if, if usually he's not playing from behind. Right, I agree. Now, let's talk about that defense. It's surprising so far. That defense stepped up in the second half, and do you attribute that to the combination of K.J. Wallace and K. Madrano, or is it just overall energy that Coach Beloy is bringing on? I think it's a it's a pretty balanced group. I, I like the secondary. I obviously got Jay Toy up front and, and, and some good push from, from the interior defensive line. Uh, linebackers group is very deep. 
Uh, you know, obviously they don't have the incredible edge rush of last year, but I think it has been kind of more of an ensemble cast. And in the second half, they seem to figure things out. H held Hawaii to 100 yards and only three points. And if they can carry that over to Indiana, uh, they, they have a real good chance. I agree. Ben, I got to uh, gotta leave you with a, a wondering question. Or oh, actually not a wondering question is the other side of town. USC is looking really, really solid, especially that performance against LSU. Do you think that's because of Mr. Lynn going over there? I think it's a big part of it. I mean, they shut out Utah State, uh, you know, 48 to nothing, and I believe Utah State only got over the 50-yard line once in that game. So, you know, props to him with a lot of the same players just looking like a completely new defense. So right. yeah, I'll tell you this. I do not expect Dan Lynn to be a coordinator much longer. This guy's going to be a head coach in a, in a matter of years, you know, maybe even as soon as next year. He's, he's a hot commodity. Yeah, he is. He is. So, uh, SC, if you're smart, lock that man up to a long contract. <laughs> you know what, Ben? Uh, thanks for coming on board, giving uh, the Westwood Open House fans a glimpse of the season. And, you know, just like any other guest, we're going to give you a gift for coming on board. Uh, we have a... Starbucks gift card from the open house. That's on behalf of Donovan Carter, myself, and the Spartan Tribune. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. on board. Thank you, Anthony. And Pleasure. I, and we'll collect that gift from uh, Ben in the booth uh, this Saturday at the Rose Bowl. So see you guys soon. And here's our next segment of Westwood Open House. Westwood Open House fans, we are in the cart. Kathy's going to take us on this fantastic tour. We're going to go towards the vineyards, you know the it. homes, From and top uh, to bottom, bottom to top, and everything in between. Don't forget the pool. And the pool. You want to see some pools? We'll show you some pools. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's take it away. Let's go. Let's go. This is one of my favorites. Aside from it being a single story, I love that when you walk in, the hallways are just so freaking grand. I like the door too. There you go. Yeah. All right, welcome home. Welcome to plan 13. As you guys can see, this is my favorite one. And I'm gonna tell you why. Look at how you're greeted by these gargantuous hallways. I mean, they're just so rich feeling, they're just, they embrace you, and the house just kind of unfolds as you walk through it. Do you feel that or is it just me? Am I crazy? No. So you got bedrooms on either side. What's fabulous about this is it doesn't just limit a particular family. Any family can live here. You can get boomerangs, you can get little ones, and then look at the space for entertaining. So this is an example, again, of Sadie's work with a local designer. We um, definitely wanted to put some special touches here with unique offerings, such as if you look here on our kitchen island, we have a different um, type of cabinetry. So as you can see, they kind of contrast 